Hello, I'm Dr. Yusuf. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we will proceed to exit exam part eight. We will discuss three questions from your previous exit exam. Question number one: Forty years old man presented with fever, shaking chills of three days duration. He has no significant past medical history. Physical examination revealed cryptation on the posterior right lower lung chest. Which one is the best initial investigation to confirm? The diagnosis. So A chest X-ray, B culture of sputum, C gram stain of sputum, D white blood cell count. Please pause the video and try to answer the question. So let's discuss. Patient whose age is 40 years old presented with fever, shaking chills of three days duration, which is acute, and he has no past medical history. And in addition to history, he has a physical finding in chest physical finding, which is cryptation on the posterior right lower lung chest. So, which is the best initial investigation to confirm to confirm the diagnosis. That means from this history and physical examination, you need to have top differential diagnosis. So, which investigation do you send first to confirm that? condition. So cryptation. What's cryptation? So it's a sound. Cryptation is a sound. Crackling, grunt, grating, or popping sound that can be heard when certain tissue or structure in the body move against each other. For example, inflammation in arthritis, which is inflammation of the joint, you may hear a cryptation. And also when we come to is this patient whose, whose problem is in the lung, a condition like pneumonia, where the rubbing of the inflamed or damaged lung tissue can create a cracking or popping noise. Uh, so on top differential diagnosis for this patient is pneumonia, but another condition may cause cryptation in the lung like pulmonary edema, that may be a cardiac origin, uh, like uh, it's 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 accumulation of a fluid in the lung in the lung due to cardiac or pulmonary origin. So another condition condition like COPD also costochondritis also causes cryptation in the lung. But like for example, if you take COPD, it is a, a chronic condition. Also, it has some history like smoking and other. Uh, significant past medical history. So for this patient, we go for pneumonia. So what is the best initial investigation to confirm that? So in addition to history and physical examination, if you send chest X-ray, if you are, if you say is chest X-ray, you are correct. So what about culture of sputum? So culture of sputum may take weeks or many days to be positive. And also the yield may be low. So it's not the best initial investigation. So culture, you can rule out culture from this. So gram stain. Gram stain is not also a best initial investigation. And you may not found any significant microorganism that is particularly responsible for this patient with your hospital investigation. So you can also, uh, gram stain is also not uh, in shine investigation. White blood cell counts, uh, you, you, found, you may found in this particular patient, you may found elevated WBC, white blood cells count or leukocytosis. But it's not confirmatory, so it can help uh, our diagnosis to, to, to come to the differential diagnosis, to narrow the differential diagnosis. So um, this definitely this patient may have leukocytosis, but it's not confirmatory. So uh, chest X-ray is very important and it's the best initial investigation to confirm uh, the diagnosis of this patient. So. Uh, WBC because it's here is a fever and pneumonia is uh, 
uh, it may be caused by infections or uh, we may found elevated WBC, but it's not confirmatory. So the best initial investigation is chest X-ray. Can rule out and rule in lots of diagnosis for this particular patient. So chest X-ray. So two. A 24 year old man has generalized lymphadenopathy after ulcer in gray white plaque to his scrotum. Dark field microscopy examination demonstrates spirochetes. Which of the following is the treatment of choice? Ceftriaxone, B. Erythromycin, C. Penicillin, D. Tetracycline. So please again pause the video and answer the question. So, in this young patient, and a skin lesion in the escrotum with the laboratory finding of spirochetes. What is your different? Um, what is the diagnosis of this patient? So the diagnosis go for syphilis. Yes, go for syphilis. Why we go for syphilis? One, the history. We go for syphilis because with this age, this age is the age of STD, I mean, young uh, STD sexually transmitted infection is uh, more in this age group. And also uh, there is a, there's a lesion in the genitalia and most importantly, in microscopic finding is there is a spirochet. So what's a spirochet group of spirochets? So those group of uh, bacteria, spiral shaped bacteria includes Borella. What is a Borella? So three important bacteria, Borella, Borella, which causes Borella species like Borella recurrentus or Borella barbarophory. So Borella recurrentus, you know, that it's a causative agent of relapsing fever. And also Borella barbarophory, which is a Lyme disease. So those diseases are commonly arthropoid diseases. And so we need to have uh, taken those exposure for that condition like war and condition like overcrowding more suggestive of Borella. So from the spirochet, we rule out Borella. So the other is leptospirosis. So leptospirosis is also, a, a, it's not a, a diagnosis in this particular patient because leptospirosis is a zoonot zoonotic disease and the risk factor like exposure for uh, infected uh, water and also uh, urine of animal. Uh, that because it's transmitted from animals to human and human is incidentally infected when we expose for uh, soil or water contaminated with animal. So leptospirosis is not uh, one with spirochetes. So we, the other spirochetes left with is Trypanoma pallidum, Trypanoma pallidum, which is a causative agent of syphilis. So uh, the, the, so for the for the uh, syphilis, which antibiotic is first line uh, antibiotic to treat the syphilis? Is it ceftriaxone? No. Is it erythromycin? No. Is it tetracycline? No. It is penicillin. So the answer is C. Let's have some discussion about syphilis. So syphilis is a predominantly sexually transmitted bacterial infection caused by spirochet trypanoma pallidum. So for distinct and successive clinical stage, uh, primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary, uh, this is in, this is uh, this clinical, I mean, uh, successive clinical and distinct stage can be can we, when we uh, not treat or if we left untreated, but otherwise, we do not see this district and successive uh, clinical stage. Otherwise, uh, uh, if we don't treat that, we, we will see the successive clinical stage. 
uh, when we see the our particular patient in the previous question, is it in primary, secondary, latent, or tertiary stage? This is primary syphilis. This is primary syphilis. Let's see how was primary syphilis. Primary lesion or chancre typically start out as a solitary raised papule, usually on the genitalia. So uh, that is the entry site. The entry site, the first or primary lesion become the area where the, the bacteria enter. So commonly it is genitalia. So plus there is non-tender regional lymphadenopathy. Example, involvement of inguinal lymph node in the genital primary syphilis. There's also painless firm ulcer with indurated border and smooth base. Diagnosis typically made on clinical assessment and interpretation of syphilis serologies like serologies like VDRL, RPR. So alternatively, the diagnosis can be made using studies that directly detects uh, trypanoma faldem, example, dark field microscopy or PCR if a specimen of infected tissue is obtained. So you will take uh, the tissue from the infected or from the, from the lesion, and then you will examine with a dark field microscopy. And if you found spirochetes and uh, with history, that's suggestive of STD. So that is syphilis. So this is primary syphilis. So you can see how it's, how the lesion looks like. This is a glance of the penis. So there is a, a primary syphilis or primary chancre. We call it chancre here. So chancre indicates a primary syphilis. You can also see here in the shaft of the penis. So this is primary syphilis. Uh, you, when you, if you want to discuss about this secondary uh, syphilis, it is secondary syphilis is characterized by a polymorphic myclopapular brush that appears on, on the palms as well as on the soles. So uh, this stage may be followed by a latent, uh, a latent stage of syphilis. And the, uh, the tertiary syphilis uh, is a characteristic of granuloma, and we call it guma. So when you talk about tertiary syphilis, don't don't forget about guma. When is the term a guma, which is a granulomatous lesion, this is a tertiary stage. Guma. So so it, which can cause irreversible uh, organ damage. So when you talk about tertiary syphilis, you are talking about organ damage. That damage is maybe irreversible. So for example, you know that uh, you can remember is a term called syphilit, uh, syphilitic aortic aneurysm when it involves uh, heart. Uh, so any organ may be damaged. So that irreversible organ damage stage is tertiary syphilis. So a treatment of syphilis is penicillin G. So it's a first line therapy for all patients. So the third, a 30 years old prisoner present with intermittent fever and headache of two days duration. He claims that three of his Roommates had similar symptoms we were treated in the prison. Blood film examination showed spirochetes. Which one of the following is the most appropriate antibiotic choice for this patient? ASF drugs and B, ciprofloxacin, C, procampensinin, D, vancomycin. Uh, I'm sure this is not difficult for you because we just, I just show you we highlight about the spirochetes, which bacteria are in the group of spirochetes. So from the spirochetes, with those risk factors for this particular patient, your diagnosis should be, please have a diagnosis and then what is the first line therapy for that disease? So 
This patient have intermittent fever, intermittent fever and headache of acute duration. And also here is some risk factor. He is in prison, he is in prison. And some of his roommates had the same similar symptom and treated. So another finding is in laboratory finding is spirochetes. Spirochetes, so we know that which organisms are present in, uh, in the group of spirochetes. So there is a borella, borella, which is, we go for borella recurrentis, and also borella burgorfori. So uh, the other spirochetes is trypanoma palde, which is a causative agent of syphilis, and the other is leptospirus, which is a zoonotic. Uh, so from those spirochetes, for this uh, particular patient, the responsible bacteria is Borella recurrentis. So Borella recurrentis is a causative of which disease? Relapsing fever. If you say this patient had relapse, relapsing fever, you are correct. Why do you? with the term relapsing fever is used because patients with relapsing fever have intermittent fever. There is a period of uh, resolution of the fever and then again, the fever will come. So this term is called relapsing fever. I mean, intermittent fever and that is a term for relapsing fever. So for the relapsing fever, Borella recurrentis is responsible and it is in spirochetes so this patient whose risk factor is in prison that means for the borella recurrences there is two type of borella recurrences which is loss born borella recurrences and tick bone borella recurrence so overcrowding overcrowding poverty war is a very very well-known risk factor for Borrera recurrentis. So when there is a poverty, poor sanitation, overcrowding, there is relapsing fever. There may be relapsing fever. So the best and the best antibiotic or personal therapy for Borrera recurrentis is is this ceftriaxone? No. Ciprofloxacin. No. Is it vancomycin? No. It is C, procaine penicillin. If you say procaine penicillin, this is, uh, you are correct. So procaine penicillin, single agent for the, for the especially for the loss born uh, re, uh, relapsing fever, uh, it is a single, single dose of procaine penicillin is enough. But it is, if it is thick, born relapsing fever, tick born relapsing fever, you can treat seven to 10 days of antibiotic, but you can change the antibiotic regime to oral antibiotic like or oral doxycycline. Uh, um, if, if the patient is stubborn, so loss born, single agent IV medication is enough. So let's tell you something about relapsing fever. It's caused by spirochetes, Borrelia recurrentis, is loss bone relapsing fever and tick bone relapsing fever. The persons of relapsing fever, especially if they're recurrent fevers, are accompanied by crisis phenomena. Crisis phenomena means rigors, arthralgia, myalgia, and lie, especially the chills and rigors. So history of exposure to body lice in area where the loss bore a relapsing fever or cattle tick in locality where tick bore a relapsing fever for. So is this patient uh, probably have loss bore relapsing fever because he is in prison and loss bone is common there. So tick bone is tick bone relapsing fever is very severe than the loss bore relapsing fever. So the prevention is delousing and having a proper sanitation is very important in overcrowding 
has to be minimized. So microscopic examination of peripheral blood for the presence of spirochetes. You may be confused for this patient. You may be confused uh, with uh, with uh, typhus, but in 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 typhus, uh, you uh, the the causative agent is rectitia uh, species, especially rectitia uh, prosaki in life. So you not spirochetes is not responsible for the typhus. Uh, so rectitia prosaki. Specialist for the louse born typhus is a uh, well known uh, uh, positive agent. So, no, no, don't confuse with the typhus. And also, you may confuse with uh, C prophylaxis in thinking the typhoid fever, but typh in typhoid, uh, you may uh, found Salmonella typhi, the positive agent is Salmonella typhi, and you have some history that uh, suggestive of contaminated water in food. So the first line is a procaine pro penicillin. So thank you very much. Please subscribe. It is very important uh, for me. So we will proceed to the exit exam part nine. Thank you very much.